far is it happening? So I guess I'm, I'm wondering, what is the materiality of language in relation to meaning? Yeah, that's a tricky question. In fact, I would call it a trick question. I would, I, I would call it an ambush. <laughs> well, semantics clearly, you know, first of all, is one of those, you know, one of those fields of language that it is more controversial than others. There's, if there are many theories of syntax, there's even more theories of semantics, and so the dust hasn't settled for us to we actually know what it is, but. But one thing that impinges on it, because one of the one of the main semantic functions is reference, right? There is there are words without a reference, like Jesus Christ, the Son of God, which well, which has a literary reference, but not a reference in the world. But when we're talking about language as, as active and engaged in in, in, in everyday non-linguistic practices, then we have to consider that it's referring to things that are there, like oxygen. With, that, with everything that I began the, the conversation with. Uh, and so the question of reference needs to be, a, 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 and this is one, the one aspect of semantics that I want to be able to, to, to answer you. Uh, first of all, in order to get our theory of reference right, we need to take, we need to decide what theory of experience are we going to, are we going to follow. I, 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 have, I gave a talk about this last year, so I'm not going to repeat the whole thing. But the two options is, the Kantian theory of experience, in which experience is given coherence and stability conceptually, and then became the neo-Kantian theory when Saussure's arbitrary or the signifier replaced Kantian concepts, and now is everybody cuts out its own world with language. Or do you side with Hume, for whom language has nothing to do, well, Hume or Bergson, for whom language has nothing to do with experience. Experience is all about raw intensities raw colors, raw sounds, raw flavors, raw aromas, and, in, and including intensity as it comes from the inside. The, the feeling of humiliation, the feeling of pride, the feeling of joy, the feeling of sadness. It's also very Spinozian, right? In which you cannot put words into that. And the more intense the feeling, the less you can put words to it. The intensities explode language from within, right? And when you go in a human direction, you will go, of course, in a... Uh, in a Kantian direction, reference, you know, for instance, Gottlob Frege, Frege, the great German logician, who, whose theory of, of reference was very influential in Anglo-American circles in analytical philosophy, according to whom I can refer to that, a chair, <laughs> to that, to that chair, because I know the meaning of the word chair. The meaning of the word chair is what allows me to then refer to a chair. And that is the Neo-Kantian theory of reference to this day. That's only one aspect of semantics, but it's an important aspect of semantics. In a human tradition, for instance, when you're trying to define, you have a piece of yellow, shiny metal, and you say, is this gold? You know, is this what the word gold referred to? You don't go to a dictionary and try to find out the meaning of the word gold to decide whether this is gold or not. You take it to an assayer, right? chemist is going to throw sulfuric acid and do all kinds of non-linguistic interventions into the referent to try to find out, oh, no, sir, yeah, they fool you. This is fool's God. Is it, is, is it almost as good as real gold? No. It's not gold at all. But the meaning of the word, get out of my store, right? In other words, reference is achieved via non-linguistic practices. This is what Foucault tried to, tried to bring on in, in Discipline and Punish which is something that has never been understood by people. If you ask the majority of Neo-Kantians whether, whether, whether imprisonment and torture, you know, waterboarding, is a, a discursive or a non-discursive practice, they are going to tell you that it is a discursive practice. You would just want to waterboard those people, right? To put it, to put it in a nutshell, matching a category of crime to a category of of punishment, say, you stole something with your hand, therefore I'm going to cut your hand off, that is discursive. You're taking two categories, or the meaning of two categories, and matching them because there's a relationship of resemblance or similarity between them. You stole, you get the hand cut off. But the actual cutting of the hand is non-discursive. And so what Foucault was trying to say in that book is, look, we have only half the story when we are linguisticizing everything. We also need to bring all those causal interventions in reality 
which make language ultimately stick and which make reference real.